follow the red line. Stop on the other side, face the wall. Go ahead and step in here. There's a phone on the wall. If you want to make a phone call, press the black button on the bottom. Mom, I'm in jail. I killed them. Mom, what am I doing? Get me out, please. I don't know what to do. Mom. <laughs> Remain seated and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Michael J. Rushton, Judge, presiding. Good afternoon, everyone. We are now going on the record in the matter of SWF 1900937, the People versus Chase and Babcock. All parties are present before the court at this time. I will now have the parties state their appearances for the record, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Thank you. Angela Santa Maria on behalf of Chase and Babcock, who is present seated to my right in custody. Thank you, Your Honor. Vanessa Romero on behalf of the people. Very good. And I assume in this matter, both parties uh, desire to be heard before the court imposes sentence. And we will begin with the prosecuting attorney. And I do understand that there is a victim impact statement by a family member for one of the victims. And we'll go ahead and have the prosecutor uh, introduce that party. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, the people would ask that Tabitha Dawes, the mother of one of the victims, address the court for her victim impact statement. My name is Tabitha Dawes. I'm Sedona Dawes, Thulmer's mother. And so I'm here today because you made a stupid mistake. You got behind the wheel of a car and you drove. And my daughter's now dead along with two other children. I'm never gonna see her again. I'm not gonna see her graduate, go to college, get married, have children. And it's something you have to live with for the rest of your life, that she's gone. I hope you think a lot about it because she's not gonna come back. Your Honor, the people request that the defendant be sentenced to the maximum of 16 years in state prison for this case. Defendant's conduct in this case is one of the most egregious cases that we've seen, and it resulted in the tragic loss of three precious lives. On that fateful night, the defendant chose to drink, not just one, not just two, but many, many drinks as we learned from the toxicologist in this case. In fact, he didn't stop there that night. He made the decision to, to drive. Defendant chose to drink and chose to drive. He had many options available to him that night that he could have taken to avoid getting behind the wheel of the car, but he showed no caution for care or human life when he decided to turn down those options and drive. To see his absolute disregard for others, we need to look no further than how he chose to drive that, that night and that morning, speeding, passing cars, driving on the opposite side of the road, on what should have been a normal weekday school morning, the entire school bore witness to the unthinkable that morning as they were heading to their classes. Due to his choices, three young people will never have the chance to grow up. They won't get to graduate high school, go to college, get their dream jobs, buy their first homes, or have their own children. Instead, the families and parents of our three young victims are living a very different reality one where they have had to bury their children and say goodbye much too soon. Sedona, Jake, and Tyler are never coming home. The safety of our community demands that the defendant be sentenced to prison. He's not suitable for probation. When taking into account the seriousness of the offenses, the physical and emotional pain inflicted, and his willful participation, no consequence other than prison is justified. Defendant's willful actions injured two young teenagers as well. They will no doubt have to live with the physical and emotional effects of this for the rest of their lives. Three innocent people are dead, two are injured, and countless people in this community 
and beyond are forever changed because of the defendant's actions. An upper term sentence will ensure that society is protected and that no more innocent people are victimized at the hands of the defendant. The community has suffered endless repercussions and a lasting feeling of loss at the hands of the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, this is quite the tragic day that we are here. And before I begin talking about Mr. Babcock himself, he does want me to relate to the court his deepest condolences to the families who have suffered the losses in this case. The people that were lost in this case are not just nameless victims, they were his friends. They were people that Jason enjoyed spending time with, that he developed close personal friendships with, and he too is experiencing their loss. I'm not here to condone what Mr. Babcock did. In fact, he did make a very foolish mistake. But Mr. Babcock is more than just one night of his actions, one night of a mistake. He is a 18-year-old man at this point who has never been in trouble with the law whatsoever. He comes to this court with a 4.0 GPA a uh, recipient being admitted into Northern Arizona University where he plans on majoring in the nursing program where he actually wants to become a professional in a field where he will be helping to save lives. And while he had a hand in taking certain people's lives, I remind the court that that is the greatest punishment he will live with for the rest of his life. I think the impact of losing three friends in this horrific accident is in of itself a, what's going to be the everlasting impact for Chasen. He was someone that's known and known for his leadership skills in school. He was the captain of his football team, captain of basketball team. He also participated in track. So not only is he someone who is involved in his community, known amongst his peers. He also has a lot of support from the community. I'll point out that his mother is actually here in the audience today supporting him. He also has friends from the community here on his behalf because these are people that know who Chasen truly is. And he is not to be defined by his one night of ignorance, by his one night of mistakes. And so with that, I would be asking the court to consider probation, to seriously consider probation at this point. But if not, I'd be asking that considering his lack of cr criminal history, this being uh, a very unusual circumstance, I'd be asking the court to be considering low or midterm where the court has the discretion to sentence him still anywhere between four to 10 years. And so with that, I would submit to the court. All right, very good. Counsel, thank you for your comments this afternoon. I also want to thank Ms. Dawes for being present and the heartfelt comments that she made. And obviously in circumstances such as this, there really are no words to express the loss that uh, one would feel under these circumstances, truly no words. Um, in this environment, ladies and gentlemen, it's very easy uh, and speaking particularly to um, our young defendant, Mr. Babcock, it's easy for us to focus our emotional energy on the 18-year-old person who is facing a, a period of incarceration and the life uh, and the promises that his life held and what he stands to lose at this moment in time. And it, it is a realistic consideration. It's true that uh, honestly, the life that uh, you imagine Mr. Babcock uh, is now gone, uh, essentially. You flush that down the toilet uh, the night you got in the car and started driving after you had been drinking with your friends. Uh, we cannot lose sight of the people who have also completely lost their future and every day of their future and every bit of promise that their uh, future held for them that being Sedona, Jake, and Tyler. Mr. Babcock, your background um, is impressive. You have no criminal record. You are young, uh, but a senior in high school. Um, you have been active uh, in your school and have performed well in school. And all of that, I would say, in a typical case where human life had not been lost, would call out for a judge to give you a period of probation. 
However, in this case, uh, and I believe I speak for the community here, there is no way that, that our community, Riverside County, would tolerate a person who had taken three lives uh, going off to the county jail for a period of one year or less to be released in six or seven months to go back to your ordinary life with the terms and conditions of probation. So, Mr. Babcock, though it brings me no joy, at this time you are hereby sentenced to a period of 10 years in state prison. That 10 years is based on the midterm for count one, the um, vehicular manslaughter of Sedona Dawes Vollmer, a consecutive two years for the death of Jake Matula, a consecutive two years for the death of Tyler Hall, as to count four, I exercise my discretion to run those additional two years available to me concurrently so that you will not serve that additional time. The good news, sir, is that should you choose, you will get to go to college and perhaps graduate from college before you're 30 years of age. You will still have a life that may end up being wonderful and joyous and fruitful for you, an opportunity that your schoolmates will not have. Thank you. All right, at this time, uh, Mr. Babcock, I hereby remand you uh, to serve your 10-year state prison sentence. Deputy, you may take him away at this time. Thank you. And this is a forthwith sentence.